Today we'll review these three topics. I thought I'd show you how complex my little system has become by showing you this system block diagram. The ZVS heater is shown at the right center. Its 48 volt power supply sits at the left center. All the blocks in between are for monitoring and control. At the lower left are the low voltage power supplies that feed the cooling water pump, the ZVS heater's own cooling fans, and the frequency counter and SSR protector. There are two 120 volt fans for the radiator, which, is, which are shown at the lower right, but I only need the smaller one even on long hot runs. Several of the blocks whose titles start with an asterisk are internal battery powered meters and one timer. At the bottom of the page, the power distribution image shows how all the power comes together. Next, I will take you around the actual device and point out these components. Now let's look at a few pictures of the actual components. I know this is a pretty messy setup, but please bear with me. At the right front of this picture, you see the cooling fans for the 2500 watt ZVS heater and, of course, the heater itself is directly below. Just to the left of the bright yellow baffle is the 12 volt DC cooling water pump. In front of the baffle, you see the 2 and 5 8 inch ID work coil. That's the size that usually comes with the 1800 and 2500 watt heaters. Left of the pump is the 48 volt power supply. And sitting atop that power supply, you will see a general purpose temp meter, the temp meter for the SSR heat sink, the SSR protection device, and just above that on the white plywood panel, the temp meter for the radiator. In this view, unfortunately, the analog ammeter is hiding behind the radiator's expansion tank. Just below and behind the expansion tank sits the DC power switch, which is actually a DC rated circuit breaker. Just above the top of the expansion tank, you can see the PID controller and, to its right, a simple event timer. The toggle switch to the left of the PID controller is not used at present. Again, in this view, the frequency meter hides behind the expansion tank, but we will see it better later. Just above the ZVS board's fans, you see the blade fuse holder and the fuse. Lastly, in this view, just below the 48 volt power supply, you see the high voltage, that is 120 and 240 volt, distribution box. Here, you get good views of the analog ammeter, the frequency counter, and the circuit breaker. The shiny metal cable that you see just behind the bright yellow baffle is the Type K shielded thermocouple for the PID controller. Yeah, I know it's a big wiring mess, but it works. The big black box at about 11 o'clock is the back of the PID controller. Just in back of it sits the Schmidt trigger board for the frequency counter, and the white and blue cylinder to the right of that is the back side of the analog ammeter. Moving on to about 3 o'clock is the back of the 48 volt power supply and at 4 o'clock sits the DC to DC SSR. If you look hard you can see a thermocouple probe stuck to the SSR's heat sink. I use modeling clay for this. Just to the left of the SSR is the 75 millivolt shunt and hiding behind that is a little terminal board that I can use if needed to distribute 12 volts DC. Here you see the radiator that cools the work coil. In this view you can see a small computer fan. That's all I really need to cool the system even when running at a high current for extended periods of time. Towards the bottom of this picture you can see the 120 volt power strip that feeds the 120 volt fans and the low voltage power supplies. See the large fan at the bottom of the picture. That's the fan I installed when I first put this setup together. Works great, but it was really noisy. So I installed the smaller and much quieter fan that you saw previously. 
As you can see, the fan's cord is wrapped up because I don't need it anymore. Also note the thermocouple probe stuck into the radiator fins. The last thing here is the storage stack of work coils. I think that's about 20% of all the coils that I have around here. This completes our walk around of my 2500 watt ZVS heater system. Next, we'll change subjects and look at some testing of non-ferrous work materials. Here's a spreadsheet that documents testing of various, mostly non-ferrous workpieces. I perform these tests to help in choosing the best workpieces to use during the SSR protection demonstrations in video number 193. I needed one piece that would easily cause tripping of the circuit, so I used steel for that. But I also needed one that would soak up a lot of power, but just not enough to trip the SSR protect device. I chose non-ferrous materials for the soak up a lot of power demonstration since they don't have a curie point and aren't subject to rapid current reductions. That way I wouldn't have to worry about my amperage readings dropping during the tests. As an added benefit, I hope some viewers will find this information generally useful. After trying a few inexpensive and clearly fake DC to DC SSRs to control current to the 2500 watt heater, I started to look harder for DC to DC SSRs that might stand up to this service. Although I currently have seven of them from four different manufacturers, I focused on the TW TAID 60 amp version. I had one in the system for quite a while functioning flawlessly. Then one day, I mistakenly shoved a thick steel bar so far into the work coil that the current momentarily went well over 50 amps and the device shorted immediately. That's why I spent my shop time on and off for the next several weeks working on my SSR protection device. During that time, I decided to tear down one of the failed devices to see if it could be repaired. So in this picture, you see its tiny active switching device on the right in front. Unfortunately, by the time I got the potting compound scraped off of it, I could not identify it. So I decided to repair the SSR if I could. I tested the input circuit and that worked okay. I decided to replace the output device with the same MOSFET that my ZVS induction heaters use, that is the RRFP260N. By the way, I bought a bunch of them from DigiKey just to make sure they aren't fakes. You can see one of them on the left in the front. It seems about four times as big as the original device, doesn't it? Anyway, I had a little trouble fitting it into the existing case, but it seems to work. So far, I have only tested it with 9 volts at about half an amp, so there's still more to do, but at least the thing works again. I won't be in a rush to get that testing done, since my new SSR protection circuit shuts off current flow pretty quickly, in case the operator pulls another dumb overcurrent stunt.